Hello everyone, my name is Ansel Girl and today I want to talk about Screaming Frog and show you in practice some useful configurations that will help you to crawl almost any website. First of all, let me say that Screaming Frog is a really insightful tool with lots of tabs, lots of ways how to analyze the site. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't cover everything in one video, so today I will jump into the basic settings and won't waste time on, you know, some advanced techniques, but I will try to do my best to give you a quick overview of almost uh, universal settings for your crawl, which um, would help you not only to detect uh, some critical bugs, but also find some opportunities in how your technical SEO could be improved. Okay, so the most interesting tab for exploring in this part is configuration and let's look more precisely on configuration mode. So what can we see there? By default, images, CSS, JavaScript, SVF um, links are crawled um, as well as internal links, external links, but here we see a few, a few points um, which are not uh, chosen. And from my experience, I advise you to click on it. Um, yes, yeah, so what, uh, what will it do? Pagination. Uh, maybe you heard that Google for now uh, doesn't pay attention to text uh, rel next than the previous uh, but the truth is despite the fact that google is top priority crawler uh, there are also some useful search engines the market uh, which use uh, pagination so it's a really good practice to take in uh, hrefangs so by default uh, screaming frogs store hrefangs but uh, doesn't crawl it. So if your site uh, uh, contains a few languages, um, you, it, it's better to crawl uh, these links uh, in headers or in site maps uh, and to look more precisely on uh, connected version, language version of the site or regional versions. As well as MP pages, uh, it's it's not so common case in 2022 that people use uh, accelerate mobile pages because even Google said it in some way fails with uh, this technology. But you for for sometimes you may even not know that uh, some of your pages contains MP, and it, it's a great way to crawl it and discover it. How to uh, how to define it, how to find it. Uh, as well as some meta refresh for some pages, it's also a good practice to see those uh, links in meta refresh uh, because sometimes you can find a hidden redirects. Meta refresh, in, in brief, maybe you haven't heard about it. So, meta refresh, it's uh, like like an analogy of redirects um, after a few seconds, for instance, a uh, user could be redirected to the other page, but it's not so good practice to use those links. It's really a few cases when it could be useful, so it's better to know if your site contains those meta refresh links as well as uh, iframes. Uh, yeah, so here we can also see uh, crawl behavior box with a lot of antique points, uh, I by default I advise to take them all. Uh, so in brief, what does it mean? Crawl out the uh, of start folder. It means that if you start from not from the home page of a site, for example, from blogs, so it will start to crawl exactly from that folder instead of crawling from the home page. It's a useful feature because yeah, it's a quick way to let screaming for you know on where you want to start. Crawl or subdomains, yeah, it's also, sometimes you may think that site uh, doesn't have subdomains, but it's really good practice crawl them because sometimes results could surprise you. For, for some reason, your developers or developers teams on your uh, client's project could forget to close from indexation testing subdomains. So, so just, just a case when you could discover them. Uh, yeah, so what about follow and turn and follow? It, it's not, if you if you need to do a quick crawl, crawl, I would advise you not to take it, but in general, it's great to see which internal pages are now followed, you know, because it's 
it's in fact I couldn't imagine what could be a, ba a good practice to um, know no no to know follow internal links because it's links inside your site and it should you know uh, distribute th this equity is useful and better to crawl those links and uh, see more precisely um, do you really need to use no follow uh, and follow external follow um, so links to external sources from your domain would be useful for example in case when you could be hacked and some links could link, uh, you know, from your site to some unsafe out um, sources. So by default, uh, XML sitemap isn't crawled uh, by Screaming Frog, so it's a good practice to take it. And, uh, you know, if you specify um, sitemaps in robots.txt, or inside the most common ways, like like address of the site, like homepage, sitemap XML, or homepage, sitemap index XML for WordPress site, which usually use Yoast plugin. It's also good practice to tick them. But if you want to specify some some unique uh, places where your sitemap is, you can also add it here uh, and crawl this sitemap. But yeah, you, you should use it uh, to get more data about some orphan URLs, which could be in your sitemap, but isn't linking uh, anywhere from uh, the homepage or from world domain. And if that is a problem, it's better to discover those URLs. Okay, let's move on. The second of instruction of elements. So by default, you see that the most common elements of HTML such as title, description, meta keywords. I'm not sure it should be used, but okay, let's uh, let's take it to see how many <laughs> how many useless, useless keywords is used there before you know that Google doesn't use it anymore. Uh, yeah, so uh, almost the same, but uh, here we see that uh, HTTP headers, cookies uh, are not clicked, but I advise you to put the tickets on it. So the good practice, uh, HTTP headers could be useful, for example, when site is for some reason closed uh, with authorization of, uh, or if you crawl site with lots of JavaScript, uh, it would mean that uh, you can crawl and see and uh, see more information about headers of the site. Also, by default, Screaming Frog won't crawl the structured data, which uh, could be, which could contain a lot of missed opportunities and uh, misleading information. So it's also good practice to first to find out which type of structured data your site uses. So visit Google Rich Snippet Test and test a few pages to see which format uh, your site is using for Google. But the most common is JSON-LD, so just Mm, I advise you always to tick on this point and then you can also click it's not you know, so urgent but you can it's really useful that you can click and verify it inside screaming frog uh, in schema org in google reach result feature validations and also use it whether your validation is case sensitive that is a good practice also for some reason if you crawl staging site or site which are waiting for redesign i always advise you to tick store html and store Render HTML because in that way um, you will see it, it will be much easier to track differences between data when some huge updates are made. It's really good to you know to have a database of your changes. What about limits? In fact, for most crawlers, I don't advise you to change everything there. But just went, won't lose time. If you have any question, ask me. I will uh, share what I know. Rendering for by default, a uh, text only mode is used. But if you see that site use a lot of JavaScript, uh, tick also on the JavaScript. So advanced. I also don't see that you should, should tick anything there except of uh, crawl fragmented identifiers. In other words, uh, bookmarks or fragmented links with hashes uh, which could be really useful to see if there are any errors inside those links because uh, they are part of your internal link strategy and it could be really useful to see if there are some cases of 
useless curl fragmented identifiers or errors in them and they can detect ask your content team to fix them inside admin area the preferences by default should should be the same uh, and just you know additional information on how many pixels uh, the title is to be shown as you know extra long or extra small but yeah i did uh, a think screen frog team made a great job to you know to find out the average number of characters uh, and pixels which are usually displayed in serp so yeah you could rely on this question just a few points uh, for basic crawl should be done. Robot 60 uh, settings change to ignore Robot 60, but report said it's always a good practice to see which URLs are disallowed in your Robot 60 and to see their own data. So I would advise you to ignore Robot 60, but report status. Also, URL rewriting is only useful for its advanced feature, just don't. Pay attention to its CDNs also. You can include and exclude data easily uh, if you want to crawl, you know, some specific folder or part of your site. But in general, I would not recommend you to do so because uh, you get a fragmented crawl, partial crawl. It's not good to see sample data because you couldn't see the big picture. But if you already crawled the site and you need to renew some information or just to see the dynamic of specific folder, it would be useful to slice your site in that way and exclude or exclude some URL. Speed, it means how many threads, how many, in other words, how many um, resources Screaming Frog could use on the site. But so as not to uh, you know overload the server for too much i would advise you to use not more than five uh, threads uh, so don't touch it user agent yeah that is really uh, useful tips not to use a uh, screaming frog user agent but to use instead google bot smartphone because you know that google switch on mobile first indexing a few years ago uh, and it's really useful to see see your site as Googlebot sees. So yeah, I use uh, in most cases Googlebot for crawl. And let's move on. Just a few, a few tips left. Uh, user fit, no, no, no. You could add uh, additional data from Google Analytics, uh, Google Search Console, PageSpeed Insights, but it's only if you have access if you or your client give you access to it, then you can easily set up. If you have any question, ask me. I will tell you how to do it and you will get much more data to explore. But for basic technical audit, it's, it's not urgent to use it. Um, if your site is blocked on a test mode, for instance, you can use uh, this part of serialization. But the last but not least is uh, setting off your system memory in storage mode so memory allocation um will help you to configure how much memory screaming frog could use by default it's only two gigabyte uh but and you always could uh, could use uh, less than um you know the biggest amount that your uh, pc could give you but yeah for for most of crawlers it would be enough but if you are going to crawl really big site or mix e-commerce project with lots of products it could be helpful to increase this number the really important point is to pay attention to a storage mode because by default all crawls is stored in memory in random access memory and it's not the best option if you want to track a dynamic of crawls if you want to open the last crawls and store more data for uh, more urls it's better to switch to database storage to increase the number of urls you could crawl and store it on your pc yeah i think i covered the most important information which uh, settings you can use for most of crawlers so yeah that's it please let me know if uh, i need to cover more additional settings or you didn't get some points i will help you with pleasure and don't forget to like and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for watching and